Well, hello, everyone. This is Pastor David Rubelid, and I just want to ask you, are you anxious? You know, with everything happening in our world and continually happening and with what seems like life is speeding up and so many things that are out of our control and maybe there's things in your family and in your life that you feel are out of your control and you're maybe obsessing over things that might happen a day or two days or three days from now and maybe there's things that are just out of your control. Jesus talks about this in Matthew 6. Starting verse 25, he, he says, and maybe you've heard this, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not your life more than food or body. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns as if they're, you know, stressed for the future. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And then he continues and he kind of says that about the lilies of the fields as well. And hopping down to verse 31, therefore do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? I want to pause here because that's all stuff that we struggle with. And Jesus is telling us we, we don't have to be anxious because our heavenly father cares for us. So what practically then does Jesus call us into, you know? For some of us, we think if we just say to ourselves, don't be anxious, don't be anxious, God's in control, don't be anxious, we think that that will remedy it. But here's what Jesus says. See, sometimes our focus is the struggle. We focus on the things that we're anxious about. Here's what Jesus says. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Another way to say that is everything else will fall into place. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else will fall into place. Basically saying, remove your gaze from the things that you think you can't control and the possible landmines in the future and put your gaze on the kingdom of God and on the righteousness and because God is king, everything will fall in place. And here's what I want to say. How, how do we do that then? Well, first and foremost, we realize that God is in control, that, that Jesus is king of his kingdom, and we surrender to him. That's the first thing. But I will say that when we look at Jesus, and we understand walking by faith, and we understand how he discipled his disciples, and how they discipled disciples, there are kind of three components that we see. First and foremost, there's worship. Now, worship is both personal and corporate. And all worship is, is putting God in his rightful place to say, God, you are king and I bow and I surrender to you. Ultimately, the word worship in Greek means to bow down, to treat God as if he is king. You could do this in ways publicly and, and corporately as we corporately worship and sing and come together and privately on your own. The second thing is through community and growing together with one another. There's a couple ways you could do that. You could sign up for a life small group here at Life Church. You could even just come to corporate worship and, and build community that way. We also have different studies and groups that you can look at online, lifechurchpeoria.com. If you're on Instagram, uh, that is in the bio and you could check that out. And then the third and final thing that I wanna highlight is through service. Serving one another. You know, our service comes out of our worship because we believe God's awesome. It comes out of how we're formed, but we ultimately serve because we want to express the love of God to others. But the reality is, is that when we serve and when we get into other people's lives, it removes and changes our focus from our struggles and our problems and allows us to be the Jesus-centric answer to other people's struggles. So today, as you think about it, seeking first the kingdom of God, moving your gaze onto the Lord, surrendering to him as king, worshiping him, having a heart of worship, a mind of worship, maybe being invited into corporate worship spaces like on a Sunday morning. That's the first thing is worship. The second, like I said, is 
community one another. Feel free to look into life small groups, different studies, different groups, or come to corporate worship if you're not. And the third, look for opportunities to serve in the name of Jesus so that your gaze is removed from your anxieties and your struggles and you're able to be the presence of Jesus in somebody's else in somebody else's life and whatever struggles and life is throwing at them. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for today's devotional.